Shira? I wanted to come with you. <laughs> nah, y'all know what y'all doing, okay? I don't have a dirty mind too much anymore, but like, come on. Come on now. Ice Age Continental Drift is bar none the worst Ice Age in the franchise. This movie really feels like it's working against itself in order to actively push this franchise that should have ended on the third movie, in my personal opinion. The Ice Age franchise really just gets pushed by fans. A lot of fans still really do like these characters, myself included, but it's just like, it's, there's nothing really there anymore. They're just kind of like, doing random stuff and the characters don't feel like they're growing although even though like characters like say peaches you know the kid that ellie had it just it feels like no one's really growing nothing is being like a pushed majority of the voice actors are just i don't know celebrities like there's such a star-studded cast here and they don't necessarily like do much to bring the characters to life i'm being completely real like drake being in this movie absolutely means nothing okay he is <laughs> actually never mind i take that back he is a good actor just in a different way <laughs> But yeah, the mammoth they have as Drake and the mammoth they have as like Nicki Minaj mean absolutely nothing to the story. They don't even get like added to the next movie, I don't believe. Like, they're just one-offs and uh, one-offs are absolutely fine, but like, th they don't do anything and they're supposed to be a love interest for Peaches, but there's no chemistry, there's no nothing. It's such a basic bare bones story. The plot of this, like the plot beats of this story just irritate me so bad. How could you embed? Embarrass me in front of my friends. You deliberately went where you weren't supposed to. Ugh, you can't control my life. I'm trying to protect you. That's what fathers do. Well, I wish you weren't my father. This happens within the first 10 minutes, basically, and it just doesn't work because we don't have time to grow with these characters. We haven't had enough time to experience their relationships, their frustrations, or anything like that. It's just thrown out there, and I'm supposed to care? No. Before we talk about that, we're going to quickly just graze over the animation. The animation, all my points stay the same for that Ice Age animation. Like... If, if you've seen Ice Age 3, my review on that, you, you basically know. Like, there's just... It has good background elements at times, but sometimes the way they use their blur, it's like... It's not as good as something like Rio. The way they use their blur in Rio is absolutely immaculate, but like... In Ice Age, it's, it just seems very clear to me. They don't really care. They're just doing sort of like the bare minimum while still looking absolutely good and better than Illumination movies, in my personal opinion. It's just like, it's, it's not too crazy overall. Same personally with the score. The score is just... I think this is one of the worst Ice Age scores, in my personal opinion. It's just... It's, it's not, I'm not rocking with it, bro. Which I guess I can kind of see why, because I'm pretty sure the same person who has been always doing the Ice Age score is still doing it, and he's just, he's probably bored of it, to be honest. He's like, I can't do anything new or creative here. The story just doesn't warrant anything fun or good. Like, the best moments of the score, in my opinion, are with Scrat, or like, you know, the, the little glimmer of the iconic Ice Age melody, which I just still really do love. I'm going to be completely real. <laughs> oh, she's addicted to berries. Oh, Manny, you are overreacting. She's not going to be your little girl forever. I know. That's what worries me. Anything else about the score is like too bombastic or too just, I guess, sort of out of place. It doesn't really feel like everything connects very well. Shira, fetch. Aye, aye, Captain. Oh, you almost made it. I don't fight girls. <laughs> I can see why. Honest to God, I don't feel the violin really works in this scenario. It just. Something about it makes it feel out of place. It's not necessarily bad melodies or anything like that. It feels out of place with this situation. As for music in this movie, there's actually two songs, I believe, in this movie. One is a cover, which is uh, a cover of We Are Family, 
which is sung by like all the celebrities, like you know Drake, a little bit of Nicki, a little bit of um, I mean a lot of Kiki Palmer, I believe that's who sings this. Sings this, I'm pretty sure. But um, yeah. After that, there's like a little. <laughs> they try to do a little like. <laughs> A little musical-esque sort of like pirate song and it sounds so basic and so ass your wives and daughters first mate introduce me to them please aye aye captain gut he's the big and scary elegant and hairy fear inspiring he is igniting looting stealing but not appealing undisputed master of the sea oh jeez don't let this happen again I can't remember if Ice Age 5 had like um, a sort of cover of a pop song or anything like that, but like ever since Ice Age 3 with the like Walk the Dinosaur, like th they just like kind of found um, their formula, it seems. I, I don't like it. <laughs> now to talk about the story, this story is about Manny and the gang, his little gang, you know, Sid and uh, Diego. They get separated from. Uh, Ellie and Peaches, I was about to call her Queen Latifah. <laughs> now all the continent and all the ice is breaking up in this continental drift because you know, Scrat caused it and everything like that. But um, yeah, and it's up to Manny and to find his way back to his wife, basically. That's the whole story for the most part. You can definitely tell they did not have a solid plan anymore for these movies. They're just throwing shit out there, okay? Because, like, they are juggling so many plot points and, like, all the plot beats, they just don't work. Like, the relationship with Peaches and her dad, like, it doesn't feel like it goes anywhere. It doesn't feel significant at all. Same with the relationship between uh, Peaches and her trying to find, like, a girl, uh, a boyfriend, excuse me. Her trying to build that relationship, it doesn't feel like it goes anywhere. Do you want to walk with me tomorrow? Try and get our minds off all this stuff? You want to walk with me? Well, you did almost flatten me this morning, so I figure it can't really go worse than that, right? <laughs> yeah. This flirting is so meaningless and just... No, why is it here? Why is it here if it's not even fleshed out in any sort of sense? Sid also gets paired up with his grandma and there's just no chemistry there. Like, the grandma's just Wanda Sykes and that's absolutely fine, but like, I don't know, she's just crazy. She's comedy relief when there's already so many comedy relief characters in this franchise. It feels like everybody's comedy relief anymore. Diego falls in love with a female saber-toothed tiger who is a pirate. And it's just apparently, you know, they, they just click like that, basically. Even though they're fighting at the start, it's like so playful that it's like, it, it's honestly kind of just sexual as fuck. That makes you the punchline, kitty. <laughs> Don't call me kitty. Okay, I won't. <sighs> kitty. Y'all need to settle down with this shit, bro. I'm, I'm so sick of it. I remember seeing this movie as a kid in Vegas and being like so confused even as a kid because like it doesn't feel grand. It doesn't feel grand and it feels like a repeat of the meltdown. Like they're, they're running so much out of ideas that like they kind of just like recycled an idea with the meltdown because that's what this basically is for the most part the comedy isn't good anymore like the characters just don't bounce off each other anymore i think the only comedic moments that are good are, are like scrat scrat is like scrat has some of the best comedic moments there is some good good moments in the movie like that i laughed at but for the most part like it's there's no chemistry and so therefore this type of comedy it doesn't work. This is my first bath in decades. There's your proof. Diego added as much value to that joke as a popular YouTube critic would to a review. I'm really starting to realize that like, the only thing I'm really starting to enjoy in these movies is just Scrat. Like, I, re I really do love like characters like Manny Sid, you know, not necessarily Sid, but like Diego. But like, they've changed and they've just ran their course. There's nothing too interesting about them anymore. I have so much love for the Ice Age franchise and I really, really do love Scrat. Uh, there's even like a cameo, I guess a cameo, but like a little cameo from Scrat-A and I, I, I fuck with that, I love that, but like, 
the series should have, it's it really should have ended at three. And therefore, I believe I am going to give Ice Age Continental Drift a two. For a family movie, it doesn't really feel like a family movie anymore. But that's all I have to say. Anyway, how's it going, pups? It's a canine, and I. Sorry for not wearing this shirt. I don't know if I put this in the video or not, but sorry for not wearing this shirt. It's less professional, but like. Dude, I, I'm doing laundry. What do you want me to do? I don't have a shirt. I don't have a shirt to wear. I'm sorry. You're going to have to see these, these big guns. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs>